Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope Magazine here in San Jose, California at the 2009 Advanced Imaging Conference. I'm speaking with Jason Fournier, the Product Development Manager of Celestron. Celestron is a name that's certainly familiar with our readers. In fact, the company is just about to celebrate its 50th anniversary. They began producing schmidt cassegrain telescopes in the 1960s, and by about 1970 they were producing the famous orange tube C8, C5, and C14. They've got some really new stuff here that they're going to tell me a little bit about. Jason? Well, this year we've come out with a new optical design that we call Edge HD Optics. And it's basically a redesign of our schmidt cassegrain to not only give you really good visual performance, but to optimize it for astrophotography as well. Astrophotography on a, on a large format. On a large format, yeah. I mean, we, we're coming out with all four sizes, the 8 inch, the 9 and quarter, the 11, and the 14 that you see here. And what we've done is to re-optimize the parameters of the telescope, and we've integrated a corrector lens inside the tube. And what that does is that not only gives you a, a design that's free of spherical aberration, but it's also free of coma, and it produces a flat field that's over three times flatter than a typical schmidt cassegrain And with that, it can produce really flat astrograph quality image circles out to 42 millimeters in diameter, which is the same size as film. 35 millimeter, 35 size. millimeter film. All right, so right. That's, that's your full frame DSLR cameras today, and uh, some of, all but the extreme largest CCD chips. True. So you've got the, sort of the traditional Schmidt Castigrain, you've got a corrector in the front, primary mirror, secondary mirror, and then an optical corrector that's in the back of the tube here. Right, right, it's a two element corrector, and in addition with the other, tweaks that we made to the design, that's what delivers the really flat field with a coma free all the way out to the corners. All right, and the instruments that were fast star compatible, are they still fast star compatible in the new HD design? All four of the models are fast star compatible. Yes. All right, so that means that they, the fast star, you, you can replace the lens up there and turn these things into roughly F2 astrographs. Right, it has a removable secondary mirror that you can replace with a, another corrector lens in order to put a camera on it and get F2 imaging. Amazing. All right, so that's the optics. What about the mechanics? Have you changed mechanics in these new scopes? Sure. In order to make it even better for astrophotography, we added two new features to the rear cell. We added these um, tension mirror locks on the back that hold the primary in place no matter how it's pointed in the sky. So this is the old mirror shift problem that people used to have with Schmidt-Cassegrain telescopes. Right, the great advantage of a Schmidt-Cassegrain is that it, it does have a movable mirror which allows you to achieve a lot of back focus in order to put a lot of e photographic equipment on the back. Cameras, but, filter wheels, anything you want. You can, whatever you put on the back, you can turn the focus knob and make the focus come to the equipment. Right, but of course the downside of that, anytime you have a mirror that moves, when you're imaging, you don't want the mirror to move. Right. So in order to reduce that, we put these tension locks on. So once you get the telescope focused, you just tighten down on these, and those fix the mirror right in position so it won't move as the telescope tracks across the sky. Exactly, and they're on flexible rods so that no matter how much you tighten them, they won't put any force on the mirror and you won't see any image shift on your CCD chip or even through an eyepiece. No change in focus, right. once you've got it nice and precisely focused. That also brings up an interesting thing. It looks like the back of the telescope is pretty much the same traditional back, so that means any equipment that will has ever gone on a C8 or a C11 in the past will fit on these new HD scopes. Right, all the same threading is still the same traditional threading that we've had. Camera adapters, off-axis guiders, all of that equipment still fits on these scopes, no changes. True, yes. And what else? I see vents on the top here. What is that? Right. Since um, we have lenses that are in the back, it makes it a little bit harder to cool the primary mirror. But because all of our tubes are fast star compatible and they have tube vents, it makes it very convenient in order to circulate air throughout the system and cool it down rapidly. The tube vents that we have have a 60 micron micro mesh screen in it that allows hot air from the back of the primary to be released. And of course, with the removable secondary, you can remove that in order to let cool air in to really let it equilibrate really fast. Okay, and that fine mesh will keep dust and stuff out of there. Right, it's all behind. It's all happening behind the primary mirror, and since it's a, you know just 60 microns, it lets the hot air out, but it doesn't let any debris in. All right. 
And so what do you, you just suggest to people if they need to cool down the telescope quickly is you unscrew the secondary mirror, lift it out, just let the air circulate in there for a little while? Exactly, it's a good way to let cold in, air in, and let hot air from behind the primary be released. All right, that's nice. So again, this is the 14, and it's an F, F11 it's system? It's an F11 in its native format, and then of course with the FASTAR, that takes it to F2. And then hopefully later on, early next year, we're going to offer another reducer lens that will give you even more versatility for imaging. So I see that you've got this here on the CGE Pro. And uh, I know I've just come off of a couple of months of testing this, and I was very impressed with the quality of this mount versus its price and its performance. Um, this is your biggest mount that you've ever offered. It has a, what, a 90-pound capacity? Yeah, that's right. It has a 90-pound payload capacity. That doesn't include the counterweight, just the, the weight of the telescope on top of it. The 14 is about 45 to 50 pounds fully loaded. So technically, this mount could hold twice the amount of, two, of having two 14s on it. Yep. So, and the other thing I liked about the mount, uh, it's a, a great mount. It takes about a half hour to set up. One person can do it, it's, it's fully portable. Uh, the electronic system in it has a nice polar alignment routine. You don't even have to be able to see the celestial pole or Polaris. You just need to get the thing roughed in and you go through an iteration, takes a few minutes in twilight, nails down the polar alignment. I mean, perfect instrument for astrophotography. So here you've got a 14-inch telescope that's basically a portable system that you can take out into dark skies and use. Very nicely designed. Yeah, and the new HD optics is really a perfect complement for this caliber amount. All right, let's do a little demonstration so people can see what we're talking about with the fast start here. With the system, you just have to unscrew this ring, pretty simple, and then you can remove the entire secondary mirror carefully. There's a secondary mirror. There's a little indexing slot fits in there so you can put it back in. And as Jason was saying, you can do this if you want to let cool air in there to have the optics cool down. Or if you have the fast star lens assembly, it actually slides right in here and then you mount your camera on that. And you're actually working with an F2 system. Very simple to do. And one of the things that was nice, you just put it back together again. And what we discovered in the testing that we were doing is that it held collimation beautifully. Put it back together again and it was essentially in perfect collimation. That's all there is to it. But there's actually a lot more, and if you want to find out more about these instruments, you can go to the Celestron website, celestron.com, www.celestron.com. Jason, I want to thank you for telling me about the telescopes. I appreciate it very much. I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope, here at the 2009 Advanced Imaging Conference in San Jose, California.